Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn and I've been working really hard on my vault and while I've been building it, I've been recording little uh, tips and tricks here and there that explain the basics of vault building while I've been using this set. Now I know already that this video will not answer all of your questions. I'm just uh, considering this to be part one of a basic tutorial on how the basic pieces of the Vault Tech Workshop tile set works. So please watch this video and then in the comment section, ask me to answer a specific question for you. So if there's a very specific piece that you don't understand, let me know in the comments and in part two, I'm going to do my very best to answer your question specifically. But here we go, let's get into all of the different bits and pieces that I have figured out so far that I think you should know about. Okay, so you want to make rooms adjoined to a connected hallway, right? <clears throat> the, the best way that I have found to do this, uh, after much experimentation, is you make your hallway and then you find this domestic three-way piece, which I have right here. Um, this piece allows the hallway to continue, but also provides a little path leading on to the house. So then you would think, all right, um, I'm gonna go to my rooms and I'm gonna find a piece that has a door like this. Oh, but wait, it's not connecting. And the reason it's not connecting, uh, which Bethesda doesn't tell us, is because you need to go to domestic and go all the way to the end and find this doorway end cap. And this is important because the end cap has controls on it, and it also has this connect to doorway section. So now that that's connected, you can then go to your rooms, quarters, corner doorway, or whatever doorway you, you want, and then that snaps to it. But you're not done. The door is not yet there. If I try to interact with it, nothing happens. So then, I know it's an intensive process, but then you need to open up the workbench and go to the doors section, grab the door, and slide the door between the domestic unit and the hallway. That allows the door to have a connecting switch on the outside as well as one on the inside, but apparently you can't touch it. You have to actually go to the door. And then you can build the rest of your unit as you normally would. Voila! And there you go. You can use the same trick to build doored rooms on the inside of rooms. So here I'm building this uh, room here with the, with the room tiles. And I want to build another room inside this room, but doors like this one, they don't snap doorway in to other floors. See that? I mean, the, the floor will snap, but the door won't. Uh, so in order to do that, you need to be a little tricky. Grab these mid floors. They don't have any walls. They just have a floor and a roof. And wrap them around where you want your door to go. And I want my door to be right there. So I'm gonna now take my door, and now that I've wrapped it around, it has places to snap. And it can now snap in there. And then I can remove these and then place my door uh, per usual. So I'll go all the way to domestic, go all the way to the end, grab the doorway end cap, go to doors, grab a door. And now I have an interior door room inside another interior room with a door. See? And then you just build it up like you normally would. And there we have it. A room within a room. 
Okay, so you have this stairway, and this is either a domestic stairs or, or a utility stairs, and now you want to uh, connect it to a room. So you've got this um, room here, this is a common room, and you want to get it to snap, but it's not snapping, and you go through all of the different tiles, and it's just not, nothing is snapping. Uh, well, the reason for that is, is because they have an odd arrangement here. Before you can start attaching rooms to the rest of the facility, you've got to get this domestic hall to doorway. Or if you're in utility, it'll be uh, utility hall to doorway. Once you have the hall to doorway piece, you can then take any door from any other room piece, whether it's surgery or, or, or whatever, and now you can start building your rooms. So I've gone from atrium to utility or domestic, and then from domestic domestic to the hall to door, and then from the hall to door to any door from any other room, and now I can start building my rooms. All right, let's talk briefly about vault supports. They have uh, uh, all these wonderful different versions. Here's a double-decker one for really, if you're building really tall structures, and uh, they are designed to support the prefab. So as you can see, I'm building a hydroponic section over here. And these supports, uh, they go into the ground just like other supports and they snap to the bottom of uh, your brick pieces. And that's basically all there is to it. I also use them over here for this bridge. So you see I've got a, a, a bridge connected to the red uh, uh, hydroponics bridge over here. And uh, they snap underneath it, and then they also work on ladders and stairs. So you see how I've got this stairway over here? Um, there's a stairway support that works magic. And it will snap to the bottom of your stairs. So pretty simple, just thought I'd show that off. Sometimes you'll manage to kind of rig some sort of <laughs> jerry-rigged way of getting these walls together. So I've got this sort of floor wall combination, and then I've got a floor wall, a floor down here, and then I got a door in here, and it leaves this ugly, unfinished look. But Bethesda thought of that. They've got these inner corner pieces, which snap right in there. I already built, I already built one earlier, so let me grab that. And they're kind of finagly, but you can put it in there, and now you can fill in the corners between two walls um, if it's not a flush seam. See? Here's a tricky one. Let's say that you've got this sticky out bit, like a platform right there, and you want to wrap railing all around it. Well, sadly, they don't have a railing option that seamlessly goes around corners. Uh, so you kind of got to get a little hacky, and you may need the precise movement and rotation mod to do so. But if you take this railing, you see that one side is curved and the other side is not. Snap that to that corner. Then take the opposite one and snap that. Now, we've got to go around this bit, so grab this interior corner one and back it in there, and back it in there. And now you can continue to build your railing all the way around, and you have this nice curve in each of the corners. And yeah, you've got some stuff stacked up in here, but uh, most people won't notice unless you point it out to them and it still looks nice. So this one was tricky and I finally managed to do it. Uh, they, I don't understand why this was as difficult as it was, but as you can see, I've got two atrium corners closing this off. So I wanted to close this off. Um, I'm using the atrium prefab. This is the atrium prefab end. And the nice thing about this is it perfectly aligns with the length of this interior and then it slopes downwards just in line with the way that this rock formation slopes down. So it's perfect for sort of going from a vaulted entry in here, which is what, what I want, to a shorter area in there. So we're going from like a multi-story section all the way to a two-story section. 
Uh, but the problem is that the prefabs don't come with the hall end. Like, let's say I want to end it right here, which I do. Um, I would think I would go and put a wall down, but as you can see, the wall wants to snap to the side. It doesn't want to snap to the end. No matter what I do, it's not snapping to the end. So what I had to do is I had to remove the roofs, the ceilings off of these two pieces. And then I need to put something down that'll snap, but that also has a snap attach point that I can build from. And I managed to find it by going to the ceiling inner corner top. This inner corner snaps right there. Same with this one. And that, for some reason, allows me to grab this, uh, where is it? This corner piece right here. And now it snaps. I can't explain it. I, I don't understand why that is going to get it to work, whereby just putting the wall on the end wouldn't. And now I can go ahead and go in here and put my floor tiles down. And there it goes. Totally encased. Yeah? All right, let me briefly talk about lighting. Uh, the lighting in the game uh, in, in Vault 88 is really atrocious, uh, but I've managed to find a way to finagle it. So I'm not using any lighting mods. I reviewed a lighting mod that I encourage you to use if lighting frustrates you, but I'm not using any lighting mods for this, and I managed to get the inside lit pretty well. Um, the biggest problem that I have with the lighting that comes with the Vault 88 is that the ceiling-mounted fluorescent lights tend to float. The ceilings of these vaults, as you can see, have so many ridges and bumps and grooves that it's well-nigh impossible to get anything to fit flush against the ceiling. Additionally, the ceiling walls come with all of these unique textures where you would never put a light, so that is a ceiling hatch. Like, there's no reality where someone would install a light on a ceiling hatch. And then sometimes there are vents, there's some more ceiling hatches, and they restrict where you can put your fluorescent lights. So what I did is I used the square, the tiny square grate light, and then I, uh, I managed very carefully <laughs> over repeated attempts to get it as flush with the ceiling as I possibly could. And then I used the part of the square that doesn't have the hatch. Also, look at the ceiling and you're going to notice that there are, most of the squares are concave. These are actually curved. So you can't put anything flush against them. That dramatically reduces the amount of real estate where you can place a ceiling mounted light. And so that is why I resorted to using these wall mounted lights in the in the middle here, because the fall off of the light radius just was too much. It, it made the center of the room dark. So I've got one more little tiny room over here that I want to uh, light up. As you can see, I've already got my wall mounted conduit right there. And then I've got these uh, lit posters on the wall, which are just amazing. I love those so much. And this is a much smaller room, so you see that we don't have to worry about the, the hatch on the roof issue. So, uh, I don't have, actually, let me turn off my, there we go. I've got my, I've got my torch off. Uh, and this is going to help us understand exactly how the lighting is working. And let's go to the new lights that came with the uh, vault Tech Workshop. All right, so <laughs> we already... This, this is so awkward. So this light is too wide because it's just going to float. See that? It's too wide for the ceiling. So I don't know why they even made it. This one, it, it fits, but it's just really tiny. And it's probably not going to... Oh, wow. That's actually surprising. That put off way more light than I thought it was going to. Again, I'm not using any mods right now. I uninstalled the light mods that I reviewed in a previous video. Now, that is a bummer. Now that I've placed it, I can't actually select it. Well... <laughs> I guess we're going with that one. So this is the one that I used previously, and as you can see, it, it fills the entire slot. And it also lights up pretty doggone well. There, so that's floating, and we want to get rid of that floating. So let's 
move this in here and twist it around just so. There's still some floating, gosh. <laughs> so there we go, we've got four lights on the ceiling there, uh, as well as these sort of wall-mounted lights, which look nice. But it still kind of has these dark recesses, and overall it just looks clinical, and maybe that's just the nature of fluorescent lights. So what I do is after I get all of my lights done, I'll grab one simple incandescent light bulb and watch, watch the light. The color of the light is going to change. Watch the objects as they're being illuminated. They're suddenly going to become warmer. Watch this. Did you see that? Not a huge difference, but man, it just makes everything look so much better. One hanging incandescent light. Combination with the fluorescent lights that come with uh, Vault-Tec Workshop, it just makes everything look so much better. And there we go. We now have our lit commissary and our lit kitchen. Notice that here too, I have the one incandescent light bulb and it really works. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is part one of my uh, uh, basics of vault building tutorial. I've had some good luck so far. Things are coming along and looking pretty good. But I know that I did not answer all of your questions. I am sure that many of you are struggling on some things that I probably didn't even think about. And so I would like you to let me know right now in the comments below what I can do for part two. I'm working on part two right now. So now is the time to let me know what I should include include in part two so it's that I delicious. make sure to answer your questions. And uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if you found it useful, please subscribe to this channel for more Vault Tech Workshop content and Fallout 4 content in general. And thank you all so much for watching.